Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Santa's Day Off and I'm gonna be sipping on a little Moscato. Um, I do hope that if you enjoy this painting that you like and subscribe to my channel and also check out my Patreon page where you'll find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, fluorescent orange, ultramarine blue, burnt umber, which I'll call brown, green oxide, deep yellow, Mars black, and fire red. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like, but that's what I'll be using. For my tools today, I have three brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a number 11 round brush and I have a number five round brush and I will refer to these as small, medium, and large as we go through the painting process. And of course, you can switch those up if you'd like. If you're painting along with me, you're probably gonna wanna have a cup of water for washing your brushes as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I will be giving you a couple of additional resources to help you through your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the paints and the brushes and all that good stuff. So that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are painting our sky. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, blue, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have it really dark at the top and I'm gonna have it a little bit lighter at the bottom. I'm going for a, the sun is just almost all the way set, so it's gonna be pretty dark, but I don't want it black. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm first gonna kind of mark off a horizon line, but it doesn't have to be a perfect horizon line because we'll be, we'll be modifying it when we put the water on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all four colors on my brush at the same time, black, blue, brown, and white, just a little bit of each to do this horizon line. I'm gonna bring my horizon about three quarters or two thirds of the way down or a third of the way up. So to know where a third is, you can kind of eyeball your halfway point, then you can eyeball your quarter way point, and it's somewhere in the middle of those two. And then you just go ahead and make yourself a mark. You can use your brush as a measuring tool, stick your finger there, and just go over to the other side, make yourself another mark, and then you can just kind of loosely connect these two. It doesn't have to be a perfect line at this point. We're just kind of giving you a stopping point for your sky. And then I'm gonna reload my brush with blue, brown, and black. I didn't pick up any more white at the moment because I want it pretty darn dark at the top. And I'm just gonna be applying my paint in a left to right, almost like a long crisscrossy type brush stroke. And then as I come down the sky, I'm gonna watch out for my black because I know that it can easily take over and I don't want my sky to be 100% black. So I will be using a little bit of black throughout the rest of the sky, but my dominant colors right now are gonna be blue and brown. And then at some point, maybe right now, I'll pick up a little bit of white. The white is gonna to help to soften this and make it so it's maybe not so streaky or see-through. So I want my sky to look soft and you might wanna do more than one layer. I think I'm gonna end up going with just one layer on this so that way it does end up looking nice and soft. I'm gonna consciously put some white into it. But again, I want mine to be pretty darn dark. So the times I did pick up more black on that side because I felt it was getting a little bit more 
a little bit too light for me. I don't want it to go too light too soon. So again, every time I pick up my paint, I'm picking up a little bit of brown and blue, definitely. Sometimes I'll pick up a little bit of white. Sometimes I'll pick up a little bit of black, but I'm really cautious about that black because again, I don't want it to take over and it can really easily take over sometimes. But as I get right about this halfway point, now I'm gonna start going a little bit lighter. So I might not pick up very much black at all for the rest of this sky. But again, you can certainly get yours to go as light or as dark as you want. It's a visual preference. If you have some light spots kind of showing up every now and again, that's great. It might end up looking like some clouds floating by. Again, you can certainly tweak this as much as you want. I'm just gonna kind of keep continuing until I get all the way down to that horizon line. And again, as long as it's just a little bit lighter at the bottom of that sky, that's gonna provide some great atmospheric dimension. So you can certainly kind of tweak this as you go. If you, again, if you wanna do more than one layer, feel free to do so. But I think I'm gonna get this with the one layer. And I am, I like using the brown in it. I don't know if that made any of you go, huh, she's using brown in her sky. But I really like the way that it provides a nice warmth to my skies. You can start, especially when doing sunsets, my God, it works out so, so well. And getting it down at the bottom of that sky is really gonna provide the warmth from the sun as it's going down to that atmosphere off in the distance. So you can certainly, again, tweak yours as much as you want to. As, my, as I'm finishing up here, I am kind of using a less pressure brush stroke. So I'm almost just very little pressure with the end of my brush is gonna get these colors to blend in really nicely. And we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your sky all nice and executed, you can wash and dry this big brush. Just get down to the bottom here, wash and dry this big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our water. We're gonna be using our large brush and the colors that I'm gonna be using are the same colors that I used in my sky, which are black, blue, brown, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have the top of my water where it meets my sky really dark, and then I'm gonna have some darkness where it meets my, my sand as well. So I'm gonna pick up black and blue to start. So I've got a little bit of black on my brush and a little bit of blue. And what I'm doing is I'm gonna take my brush and I'm squishing it in the side of my palette because I wanna bring my bristles kind of in control. So this is gonna help me to bring my bristles nice and together because I'm doing a horizon line. So I need my horizon line to go completely in my sky. So I need to look for the spot that's the highest in my unpainted canvas. And to me, that's right about here. I'm gonna make myself a mark. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my brush as a measuring tool. And then I'm gonna go to the right make myself a mark at that same height, and then do it again over here on the left. This should theoretically be pretty close to where you had it initially, but your line is gonna shift when you do that loose um, line that we did initially. And then when you do this, I go fast, and I keep my eye on the prize, which is the next marker. And if I run through wet paint from my sky, I'm not gonna worry about it, I'm just gonna paint it right through. So here I go. I'm kind of taking my brush and I'm pushing it into my canvas. I am watching my prize, which is the next marker. That's gonna help me to stay pretty straight. I need to reload my brush. I reloaded my brush and I'm gonna keep my eye on this marker over here. That helps me to stay a little bit straighter and you might end up running out of paint or having to reload or whatnot. I need to reload right now because I'm really running out of paint. And you can see I'm kind of going on the quicker side, but I'm refraining from going too quick. And then once you have it on there, you can certainly make any adjustments that you feel necessary. And then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna make myself a marker about halfway between here and here, somewhere about here. And I'm going to 
come on this right side down about an inch. I'm going to connect these two markers with a left to right uneven broken kind of line. I'm just going to take my brush. I didn't add any more paint to it and I'm just going to kind of do this type of uneven kind of mark making like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up blue, brown, and white without washing my brush and I'm going to color in the rest of the water, something like this. And when I get down to my broken line, I'm going to keep it broken. I want it to be on the messier side. I want this water to kind of blend in with my upper area, my horizon line, without making it look like two different sections, so I'm blending that in as I go. And if you run out of paint, just pick up a little bit more blue, brown, and white, because you probably have plenty of black on your brush right now. And if it's overpowering with black, I do recommend that you wash and dry your brush. If you can't get some of these lighter hues to appear, then you probably do have too much black on your brush. So I would recommend washing it and drying it and just coming back in. And I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm just really using the tip of my brush just to get these colors on here. And then once I've got it all nice and painted as much as I want, I am going to be using the same brush for the next step, but I'm gonna wash it and dry it. So once you've got your water on, you can wash and dry that large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our beach sand. I'm gonna be using my large brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, orange, yellow, white, and I'll probably use a little bit of blue as I meet the water itself. So my whole thought process here is that I want it to be pretty darn dark down at the bottom, and then I'm gonna have it a little bit more on the sunsetty side over here. So I'll be using a little bit of orange and yellow and then I'll be having it more muted over on this side. But you don't have to go with the same color kind of variation that I have. If you can keep it dark at the bottom and a little bit lighter at the top, that will tell enough of a story. I'm gonna be using a dotting type technique and I'm gonna start at the bottom work my way up. I'm gonna use dotting for most of it, for most of the sand until I reach that water. And when I reach the water, I'm gonna be going in the water like this. So I'm gonna overlap my sand and the water a little bit so they look like they're kind of merging together. So here I go. I'm gonna start with some black, brown, and a touch of white all on my brush at the same time because I want this bottom to be really dark and really kind of muted and murky. I'm picking up a little bit of brown and black to just really get this in here nice and dark at the bottom. And I'll bring some of these colors up a little bit so as I transition into the lighter areas of the sand, I won't have distinct section, line, colored sections as I go through it. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of my orange, yellow, and brown. So orange, yellow, and brown is what I have on my brush right now. And this is where I'm gonna get a little bit more, I didn't wash my brush either. This is where I'm gonna get a little bit more of those sunsetty colors, maybe just flecking off the, the, the edges of the sand. And again, doesn't have to be exactly as mine. If you can get something with those oranges in there, that's gonna tell the story of it being a little bit more on the sunsetty side, but no worries, it's beach sand. It really can be any kind of tonal change that you want based on the lights that are around it or the type of sand that it is because there are different types of sands that come in different types of colors. There's red beaches and black beaches and white beaches and brown beaches. So you can certainly have fun with, with changing these um, and making them kind of whatever whatever color that you want. But again, for for time of day type of atmospheric dimension that I'm doing, I want it to be a little bit darker at the bottom and a little bit lighter as it goes towards that water's edge. So right now I'm just kind of picking up brown, yellow, white, maybe a little bit of that orange in through there. And I'm just going to kind of keep dotting. I'm staying away from my edge for the moment so I can kind of tackle that all at once. 
brown and white is going to be more over on this side, so it's more less in the colorful range as that side is, but again, I think I want a little bit of orange, just a little bit. And again, I'm just kind of adding these colors on here. You may end up doing multiple layers. That will definitely add to the, um, the texture of the sand, so don't feel like you have to have it's super smooth. That's why I am definitely using this dotting technique, which is going to add a lot of texture to it. And as I'm moving up towards my my sand or my sand meeting the water, this is when I'm going to start to use my brush left to right. And I'm going to get these little pieces of sand. So I have to do a transition from dots to swipes, and that's going to make this these areas look like they're like they're merging together. So you'll see I'm gonna use a combination of both of those brush strokes. And if you can get a little bit of darkness underneath some of these waves that are coming in, that's gonna make it look a little bit more natural. So like there's shadows behind those little waves, but again, it doesn't have to be anything perfect. I probably am gonna go before I'm fully done, go in with a little bit of the watercolor, a little bit of blue, as those two areas are meeting one another. And also keep in mind, you're gonna have a big, huge camper on here. <laughs> so if your, land, if your land and this water edge do not turn out perfect, don't worry, you're covering about half of it right in through here. So if, again, I like, I, I, I like to do the full area so that way if I decide to make my camper a different size or whatever object a different size, I do not have to worry about painting around it. But I also am keeping in mind I've got a big huge camper that's going to be on top of here so I'm not terribly concerned about it being super perfect. I just added a touch of blue to my brush just to make sure that these areas really speak to each other and the water looks like it's going into the sand and the sand looks like it's going into the water so every now and again if you feel like you've got an area that might need a little extra punch you can take a little bit of that blue kind of overlap it into the sand and then you can conversely do the same with a touch of white if you want there to be these little almost white caps kind of coming in from the water you can certainly do something like that and then just kind of work it in. So you have fun with kind of tweaking this water's edge whatever way is going to visually work for you. And then once you've got this whole area done, yeah that's looking good. Once you get this whole area done, you're going to take, uh, we're going to actually be switching to our medium brush. So sand, water, and then you can put this large brush away in your water cup or wherever you want. Get your medium brush out and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the first layer on our camper. So I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I do wanna kinda of give you a little forewarning that you do wanna have your canvas dry before you start this step. So you know, you could either take an extra long break if you want to. Or you could sit here and blow on it, which might take you all day. So if it's still wet and you want a quick fix, you can just whip out a blow dryer and blow dry it. So whatever way you've got to get yours dry, maybe it's already dry by now, but you'll definitely want to dry before we go on to the next step. So I'm going to be using my medium brush. The colors I'm using are black, brown, and white. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a kind of a warm gray color. To me, this this camper that I'm painting in the daylight would probably be white, but I want it to look like it's in the evening shadows. So I'm gonna make it kind of on the grayer side and then we'll do some pops of highlight with white later. So I'm gonna take some brown and I'll just put it here and a little bit of black and some white. I'm going for kind of like a light gray, a light warm gray, which is why I've put a little bit of uh, brown in it and you could go for a cool gray you could go for whatever shade that you would like so I'm going somewhere in this vicinity maybe a little bit lighter I don't want it too too dark I still want it to look 
like if it was in the light it would be white so that's looking pretty good to me and you can always make adjustments as you see fit and i'm going to first give you a couple of dots to make or marks on your on your canvas we'll connect those dots and then we'll we'll color it in so i am going to go about halfway between my horizon line and the bottom of my canvas so somewhere about halfway and i'm going to come over almost to the center. So if this is about the center of your canvas, come to the left just a little bit. That's gonna be my first dot that I make. Then the next dot that I make is going to be about halfway between the center of my canvas and the edge of my canvas, and just a little bit lower than this. So edge of canvas, center of the canvas, so this is, sent, this is about that middle mark or a quarter of the way, and it's a, a little bit lower than halfway between here and the bottom of your canvas. So somewhere about there. Then I'm gonna make myself a third marker, which is just maybe about an inch or two away from here, and it's a little bit lower than this one. So something like that. And then I'm just gonna connect these three dots. So this one's gonna connect to here, and this one's gonna to connect to here. And if they're not perfect, don't worry. You can always make adjustments later, but this is just gonna get us started. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect this corner to this corner with a hump. I want it to, if you go about almost halfway between this marker and this marker, maybe a little bit to the right, and go up about an inch and a half above your horizon line, that's gonna be like the tippy part, the tippy top part of this. And this is the side, the, the side that's gonna be facing us the most of the camper. So how I'm gonna do this, I've got my gray paint on my brush and I'm just going to connect this one to this one with a long arcing kind of motion. So something like this. And your arc might end up a little bit different than mine. These campers come in all different shapes and stuff. So if ours are a little bit different from one another, that is totally okay. These are cool retro kind of campers that come in a variety of shapes. When I go to connect this one to this one, I want my arc to go past here. So I want it to come over somewhere in this vicinity. So I'm gonna actually come over this way and then curve it back around or vice versa. So I'm probably gonna go maybe up like this and through here and then, and then arc it back around like that. And it doesn't have to be a perfectly executed line at this point. We're gonna be coloring in this whole area. I'm just trying to get myself a good exterior profile to kind of follow for the other back piece of the, of the camper. So now that I've got this in through here, I'm gonna paint this entire section with this gray paint. So I'm just gonna take it, paint it in. It might take you a minute or two to do, but you wanna get a nice even coat and if you can still see your lines underneath it, you can wait and do a second coat or just make sure that you've got a nice thick coat on there. That's gonna help to cover those lines underneath. And I'm just going a little slower around my edges, make sure I've got them all painted in here. Oh, I had a little extra brown on there, that's okay. We're gonna be adding all kinds of fun dimension to this anyways and decorations and stuff. So if you have little streaks of other colors, that's okay. And then once I've got this section colored in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a, if I still have some of this gray left, which I have a little bit left, but if you don't have any more of this gray left, you're gonna make yourself another shade of gray that's just a touch darker. So I have a little bit left right here, something like that. I'm gonna make myself a little bit more so I don't run out. So black, brown, and white. And I'm gonna make it just a tiny bit darker than the first gray that I had. So just a little, just a little bit darker, nothing major, not too, not too, too dark. 
and then we're going to do this back section. So what I want to do is from here, I'm going to make myself a similar curve that I have on this one, and it's going to meet the top of my camper in through here. So this is going to be the back side of the camper. So I'm going to start somewhere up in through here, and I'm watching this mark because I want my curve to go a little bit past it. So something like this. I'm going to go a little bit past this mark here and bring it back around. And it should be pretty similar to that. And then you're just going to color this back section in with that, with that darker gray color. And it, you, you want to make sure that it is just a touch darker. It will dry darker than it is when it's wet, but as long as you can see the difference between the two sections, then you have success. But if you can't see the difference when you um, come to this area, then you'll want to get it just a little bit darker. And then let's see, what are we going to do for the next step? We are actually, we're going to be using the same brush. So once you've got your first layer on your camper, all nice and done, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. Okay, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting some tree trunks, some palm tree tree trunks. Palm tree tree trunks, it's fun. Um, so I'm gonna be doing mine as if they're kind of silhouetted. So they're gonna be really dark, but I'm gonna have a touch of a highlight on them as well. I'm gonna be using my medium brush and I'm gonna be using black, brown, and white. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna start with just brown and black on my brush at the same time. I'm gonna have one palm tree that's kind of uh, maybe at equal distance as the, the beach, and then I'm gonna have another palm tree that's really in the foreground, and we're just gonna see a little sliver of it. So this one I'm gonna have starting down maybe an inch away from my bottom of my canvas, something about here, and it's gonna creep up the side of my canvas maybe about an inch, inch and a half, and then I'm gonna have it going all the way up to maybe, I would say maybe about here. So I'm gonna have mine with a little bit of a curve on it. You could certainly have yours a little bit straighter. They come in all different varieties. <laughs> Palm trees are very versatile in their, in their looks and in their varieties. So you can certainly feel free to, to make it whatever direction you want, but I'm gonna have it a little bit more slender up at the top. And again, I'm just using black and brown to start. I have not picked up any white and I'm not going to until after I do my other tree trunk, um, put it in place. So that's all I'm gonna do for that. I'm gonna move on to the other one and we'll come back to this in just a second. So just reloading my brush with black and brown. My other trunk is gonna come, it's gonna go off my canvas. So I'm gonna have it started about an inch, inch and a half inside on the bottom of my canvas, something like this and I'm gonna have it almost kind of curving like this and then just trailing off my canvas, something like that. And then I'm just gonna color this in with my black and my brown, something like this. And then once you have it all on here, then I'm gonna go back to the other tree and add a bit of highlight to it. So I'm not gonna wash my brush, I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of white and brown on my brush. And my light source to me is coming from the setting sun as well as maybe some lights on the, on the camper that we're doing. So I'm gonna have my highlight on the right hand side. So really what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to kind of make a thin line going down the right hand side of this tree trunk and you don't have to go all the way to the bottom. And then once I have it on there wet a little bit, then I'm just gonna kind of start pulling it into the tree a little bit. I want it to be inconsistent. I want it to look pretty natural. A lot of palm trees have almost like these curved stripes going down the side, but again, you can use whatever type of interpretation you want, maybe just a little bit down at the bottom. And then I'll go ahead and do the same thing over on the other side, on the other tree. So I'm gonna put white and brown on my brush. I'm gonna bring this down this front edge of it, something like that. 
And you don't have to go all the way up the side. I want to wipe my brush off. I feel like I have a lot of paint on my brush. So I wiped it off on my paper towel and then I'm just going to get that highlight to just kind of blend in with the rest of the tree. Now I feel like I want more. <laughs> See, I never have exactly as much as I want. And then that's going to do it for this step. We are going to use the same brush for the next step, but you can wash and dry it and just get ready. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I am adding highlights and shadow to the main color of the camper. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I'm gonna be using white and some form of gray, darker gray. You may end up wanting to go into your original gray color if you feel like you need a second layer on it, but we have lots of details and stuff that we'll be putting on later, so you, you, know, you probably are not gonna need a second coat. Um, so the idea here is I'm going to have a highlight up in through here and probably a little bit along this edge in through here. And then I want this back area to look like it bumps out a little bit. So I'm going to have a little bit of a highlight here and probably along the edge there. So I am going to start with some white paint on my brush and I'm in essence going to kind of outline this section something like this. And what I'm gonna do is I am going to rub this white, I'm bringing it down a little bit as you can see, bringing it down a little bit like this. It's still wet. Once I've got it on there, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And now I'm gonna start kind of rubbing it in to the rest of the camper. So you might find that you want to pick up some of your original gray to get it to blend in a little bit. That is gonna to be totally on you if you feel like you need to add some moisture into it to get it to blend in a little bit. You might have a firmer brush than I do, which allows it to kind of push it around a little bit easier as it's drying. But whatever you've gotta to do to get it nice and bright, over there on the right hand side and then get it to kind of fade into the rest of the camper. I just put a little bit more white with a touch of my um, gray on there just to bring it out just a little bit further. And I'm not terribly concerned about it being super clean looking because I know that I'm gonna, again, have lots of decorations on top of it. This is an old retro camper, so it might be a little dirty, <laughs> you know, so don't worry about it being perfectly executed. I do wanna put a touch over here on the left-hand side. So I'm using a little bit of white on the tip of my brush. And this one, this area I want a little bit less of a section. So I'm really just kind of riding it down along the edge here and then maybe picking up some of that gray just to get it to blend in a little bit. And I know that gray turns darker when it dries. So as I'm doing this, if it is a little bit light at when it's wet, I know that it will dry a little bit darker. And again, if I don't get the perfect color match on it, I'm so okay with that. And then now that I've got that, now I've got to transition myself into here. So on this section here, you could in essence just use this lighter gray as the highlight for that section. So that's where I would start. Pick up some of your lighter gray, put it on this area right in through here, and then just kind of blend it out into the neighboring area, into that darker gray. And then that's gonna, that's gonna naturally give this section of the camper that bubble because you've given it that little bit of a highlight. And if you need to, you pick up some of that original dark gray just to get it to blend in a little bit more. And again, my dark gray, I know it's going to be lighter or darker when it dries. I do want a little bit of a highlight over there. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white with that um, lighter gray just to give myself a tiny bit of a highlight over on this other side, maybe from the setting sun. Who knows what it's from? It can be, maybe there's a little bit of a highlight at the top of the 
of the camper. You just want to make sure these sections look like they belong together and they're not disconnected. You need them to need them to definitely look like they're connected. And then I'm just going to kind of keep manipulating this until I feel like I've got it working the way that I want it to. That's looking pretty good. And then I need a little bit of a shadow down in through this bottom section here. So I'm going to pick up my dark gray with a tiny bit of black on my brush and I'm going to give the bottom of this section just a little bit deeper color. That way, again, it speaks to the back end of this camper being on the rounder side. I don't want that shadow to creep too far up, so I'm just wiping my brush off on my paper towel, picking up some of the original gray from here, and then just blending it in, making sure that it's a natural kind of gradient going up that particular section. And then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your campers highlights and shadows on, you can wash and dry this medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are gonna do the first layer of our door, windows, and tire on the camper. So I'm gonna use my medium brush I'm gonna be using white and black paint. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna kinda of give myself some basic shapes for these things. So I'm gonna start with my tire and I'm gonna have black paint on my medium brush. I'm gonna have my tire to the left of the center of my camper. So if this is my center, I'm gonna go a little bit to the left and I'm gonna make mine overlap into the camper about halfway and I'm just making a circle you can I'm making mine probably the size of like a half dollar but it depends on what size canvas you're using and depends on how large or how small you want your camper to look if you want it to look like a really tiny camper you put a big tire if you want it to look like a big camper you put a little tire so just proportionate the ratio will tell the viewer if it's a big camper or a small camper so once you've got your tire on there i'm going to put a little bit of white on my brush with that black so I have like a gray kind of color. This is going to be the base color for my windows. So I'm going to have a window back here and I want it to look like it's farther away on the on the right side. So I'm going to do a rectangle but it's going to be a little bit more narrow on that side. So when I do these two lines like this, they're a little bit further away on the left than they are on the right and I'm gonna give them a little bit of a curve. So it is kind of a curve like that, not much, just a real subtle kind of curve. And then I'm just gonna color it in. We'll be doing little details on it later. This is just our base coat, getting it, getting them in place. And then I'm gonna make myself one more window. You can have as many windows as you want. You could have 20 or two, whatever you want. I'm gonna have one somewhere over in here, maybe a little bit near where my tire is, maybe a little bit to the left. And I'm just gonna do a square rectangle type shape. You could make yours as big or as small as you want. And don't really worry about the edges at this point because we have another step where we're putting little details on them. So if you need to fuss with any of the little details on the next step, you can certainly do that, but I'm just getting it in place. I'm gonna wash and dry that medium brush and put a little bit of white on it because I'm gonna use white as my base coat for my door. So I washed and dried my medium brush. I'm having my door in through here. The top of it's gonna come about halfway um, in this window and it's gonna be just somewhere in through here. So I'm gonna just make myself a couple of vertical lines, something like that something like that and you're going to want to keep the top of it in relationship to this if you want it to look like it's getting closer to us in this corner if you put this almost on a horizontal that will give it a little bit of perspective like it's almost getting a little bit bigger towards us and then i'm not going to wash my brush i'm actually just wiping it off on my paper towel i want this 
door to look like it's kind of old. <laughs> so I'm going to just use that white and almost like make little white streaks on it. So again, nothing, nothing perfect. And I do want a window on my door too. So while I'm here, I'm just going to pick up a touch of black and I'm going to put a little window somewhere in the middle. So this will be, you know, similar to what I did on the others and it'll end up being like a grayish color just as the base coat. And then we're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your first layer of your windows and your door and your tire, you can put this medium brush away in your water cup, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what I'm gonna do for the next step is I am putting my stripes or my color on my, on my camper. I have used my imagination and I've cashed in my creative license to put whatever design on my camper that I wanted. <laughs> so you could totally do the same thing. You could use different colors. You could put polka dots. You could put a big, huge, enormous stripe down the side. You feel free to decorate it as you want. I'm gonna be using red and black are gonna be my colors. So how I'm gonna do this is for me, I'm just going to be doing a stripe along the bottom edge. It's gonna go right around my tire. And again, you can, oh, I don't know if I said I was using my small brush, but I'm using my small brush. I might have already said it, but in my head, I don't know if I said it or not. Um, I'm gonna do a red stripe going all the way across the bottom, even across the door, because I know that I will be putting some little details on the door that will help to separate it, even if I have this continuous stripe going across it. And red is gonna be see-through, so it will take on those light areas and dark areas from when we added the highlights and the shadows underneath. I'm gonna be putting um, a border around my door. So just red paint. I'm reloading often to make sure I have a nice thick coat on here. And I did these lines pretty horizontal, but if I'm a little wobbly here and there, that's okay. We'll just pretend like you know, maybe they're playing the music on in the in the camper and it's shaking a little bit. I'm gonna do a little overhang here. I'm gonna have this one go a little bit further to the left and the right. And again, you might find that you wanna decorate yours way different than mine. Maybe you wanna put some holiday wreaths on it or some, I don't know, a Christmas tree sitting on the top of the the camper. You have fun. Maybe you want some some fluorescent flamingos adorning the yard, whatever you want. It's so, this is one of those paintings that is gonna be just fun to paint because you get to decorate it as you want. There's, we're not trying to make it look like anyone else's or just trying to make it look like whatever one that we think Santa would be, would be hiding out and either the day before or the day after Christmas. I haven't quite decided if this is him resting up before he has to deliver all of the presents or if he is taking a break after he's delivered all of the presents. So I don't know, maybe I'll decide by the time I'm done painting it, but right now, right now the verdict is still out as to when this, this uh, painting is depicting. So I've got that. I think I'm gonna have a really big stripe coming down here. And you can see I'm kind of going slow just to, you know, give myself my own geometric lines that are making my mathematical head nice and happy. I really, um, if I was to ever say what type of painting would you want to do for therapy reasons, it would just be a whole bunch of lines. <laughs> I really like to just paint lines, nice clean lines. Just give me one line after another and I will, I will probably fall into a trance from just being so mesmerized and so relaxed, just painting lines. So if I drift off and stop talking, it's because I'm really enjoying painting my lines here. <laughs> and then I have one more. I think I'm gonna have another one kind of going across this side over here. And then 
before I'm done, I am going to utilize my black paint um, to give these, some of these sections, like the ones by the windows, I'll give them these little almost shadow type areas. Same thing with my door. So when I said I was going to do these, I said I was going to use red and black and the black is going to be utilized just to make sure the bottoms are nice and clean and um, that they have almost that, yeah, the, um, like a, almost like a little shadow. Oh, I think I want to put a, a red area on my door too. I think this would look nice if I had a nice red section around this window, maybe something like this. Maybe I should have painted my window afterwards. That would have been easier, <laughs> but I got this. I got this. I'll just paint right around it. I get to paint more lines. Yay! <laughs> my happy place in painting. I have lots of happy places in painting, but we all, as we, as we learn to paint, we all have different things that just get us going, and, and painting's lines is definitely one of my things. All right, so I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel, pick up a tiny bit of black paint, and I'm just going to make a little black line underneath some of these, the, the red pieces that I feel are sticking out and are not just decals. So I feel like these are maybe some uh, like window moldings. So I'm going to put a little bit of black on here. And my I have a shaky hand, so you might detect I, I rest my hand on things as I'm doing this. So if you have the same challenge as I do, that's that's my biggest trick is I take my hand like right now I'm bracing myself on my easel on the edge of my easel and I take my brush a lot and I spin it in my paint on the side of my palette that really helps to get a nice pointy brush as I'm doing this and I always have a lot of paint on my brush when I'm doing these small lines so that way it is nice and fluid at the tip of the brush I think I, I've got these ones over here but, you know, when we're doing these little lines, we just got to figure out what what works with our hand, our brush, you know, the tools that, that we have and that we're able to use. And then we just kind of work through those, those things. I think I'm going to put a couple of lines down here. These I'm going to do kind of loose lines just so they almost look dirty in a sense, dirty and three-dimensional. And then I think I've got to put a little doorknob on here. And then we are going to be using, let's see, I think we're going to use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got your red markers on here and your black areas, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our camper details. I'm gonna be using my small brush. I will be using black and white and yellow and orange. I think that's it. <laughs> you, we're, we're gonna be doing curtains. <laughs> you can use any colors for curtains. But first what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my trailer hitch on. So I'm gonna be using black paint to start. I'm going to give the bottom edge of my camper a line just to have a um, dimension to the bottom of it and make sure it's got a tiny bit of a shadow underneath there. And then I'm going to give myself almost like a long V kind of look from here. So something like this. I'm going to make mine disappear behind the tree so I don't have to worry about too many details on it. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to have this coming from here, something like that. Once I've got my the, the brace part on there, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of brown and white paint on my brush at the same time. I didn't wash my brush, and I'm just going to add a little bit of a highlight on top of here, kind of like a loose highlight just so the viewer doesn't think that it's a, a flat object, this will give you just a little bit of um, dimension without having to go overboard. I'm not doing anything else to that. That's all I need to do for that. Now I'm going to do something for my tire. So I am going to put 
I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel, picked up a little bit of white. I'm going to put a series of polka dots in the middle of it to make it, them look like the, the nuts that hold the tire on. I'm probably not doing mine symmetrical, but that's okay. You can have fun with it. It's just a fun tire. It doesn't have to be anything exact. I'm not washing my brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of black with the white paint. So I have black and white, and I'm just giving myself a little bit of a highlight around the edge of the tire or the outside of the tire. You don't have to um, do the whole thing. I'm just kind of doing a loose kind of highlight. I'm leaving a little bit of black around the edge and on the inside. I'm just having some fun with this. You, I don't need it to look like a photograph. I'm just making it look like a fun painterly interpretation. Maybe a little bit more white just to add a little bit more dimension onto there. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do some kind of decoration in my windows. So I think I'm going to do a little bit of maybe a, a curtain or something. So I'm just going to kind of give myself a couple of curtain lines like that. Maybe I'll do one over here too. And you could have, I don't, you know, I'm going to make my curtains a little bit darker. So I just add a little bit of black just so it looks like there's something in those windows. And I'll, I'm going to put a little bit of a light in the middle of them too. But again, this is something, it depends on what angle you're seeing it at. Maybe it's going to be really dark and you're not going to notice it, but I'm just giving a little impression that there might be some curtains in there. I think I want to make that a little bit darker and through here. And again, you can have it whatever way you want. I'm picking up a touch of white to put a little highlight on my, on my handle here. So that looks good. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off and I'm going to put a little golden light inside of here. So I'm going to pick up a little yellow and orange and just kind of rub it in here. Like maybe there's a little bit of a light on somewhere inside that camper, but you can have a light on. You don't have to have a light on. It could be dark in there. Maybe there, maybe yours is just black in there. Whatever you want to do is totally fine by me. And I just need to do two more little details. I got to put little hooks up the top where my string of lights is going to come. So I just wash and dry my brush. I'm going to put some black and brown. I think I'm going to have a hook in through here. And these are just little tiny, tiny details. So maybe just a little kind of a circle thing in through there. I'll put a highlight on it in a second. And then maybe I'll have one over here somewhere. Maybe this one's going to be sticking. Maybe this one will stick up. Yeah, that one will be a little out there. And then maybe I'll have another one coming, I don't know, maybe over here. A little one right there. I'm going to wipe my brush off, put a touch of white on my brush just to give these a little bit of a highlight. Something like that. And then we're going to use this same brush for the next step. So you can just wash and dry it and get ready. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we're putting the strings on our camper that are going to hang the holiday lights. So I'm going to use my small brush. I'm going to use black, brown, and white paint, but I'm just starting with black and brown. I am, oh, and a little water because I want this to be really a thin line. So I want these strings to look like gravity took over. So they're going to be tied to here and then they'll gravity will take over as it's going to the next one. So something like this. And I don't want them to be super thick. So that's why I used a touch of water on my brush while I'm doing this. This one's going to be maybe maybe this one's going to hang in front of my my window a little bit. Yeah, I like that. And then I'm going to have one that's going to kind of just come hanging down like this. Maybe this one's going to be a little wiggly. That went through some wet red. I'm cool with that. And then I'm going to do one that's going to come way over to this tree over here. So this one is going to come into um, get closer to us. So I'm going to do it really skinny to begin with. Um, up here and then as it gets towards this tree it's going to get thicker but first I'm going to put the part where it ties to the tree so I'm going to put that 
right in through here and you can't really see it so I'm going to put my brown and my white on it right now so you can see it. Something like that. And now I need to get this rope to connect to here. I'm going to do it skinny first and then I will get it wider after I go on it. So I want it again to look like gravity took over and it's going to end up down here. So I'm going to start here keeping my eye on the prize which is the other marker. So something like this. I need it to sag a little bit and then to come back over here. And then I'm going to get it wider. I want it to be wider down below because this is going to be closer to us. So something like that. Just make sure I've got it the way that I want hanging off of here. And now I'm just going to pick up a tiny bit of white paint and give myself a couple of little highlights along this string of lights. And then we're not, oops, I got a little red there. I'll correct that in a minute. And then we are going to be switching brushes to our medium brush for the next step. So once you get your string for your holiday lights on, you can, yeah, there we go. You can put this small brush away somewhere, take out your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our palm fronds. We're gonna be using our medium brush and the colors I'm using are black, brown, green, and yellow. And if you want to, you can use a little bit of white too. But I'm gonna start with uh, black and brown on my brush to start. I love messy palm fronds, so you're gonna see, I once I start painting, I, I just go to town. I really like painting these. So everything's gonna come out of the center of the, um, of the trunk in through here, and I start by just kind of doing the stems to my fronds, and I just make sure that they kind of come off in different directions and have different lengths to them. So just know they can really be kind of chaotic. They don't have to be systematic. And once I've got them on there, then my technique is I use the stem and gravity to tell me where these little leaves go. So I'm gonna do something like this down that stem and they can kind of go on both sides of the stem at some point. Sometimes they can just go on one side of the stem, whatever, whatever you're feeling, just go for it. And right now I'm only using black and brown. I'm gonna use black and brown as my base coat and then I'll do both trees and with the black and the brown and then I will come back and do um, my lighter colors, which is gonna be green and yellow. So that's gonna do it on that tree. I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next tree over here. So this tree, the center of the top of the, um, the trunk is probably way up over there. So you're only gonna see a couple of the fronds really large closer to us. They're way larger than this and I'm just gonna have them coming out of the corner of my canvas, and I'm gonna have them actually cross over into my, my camper like that to tell you they're really huge and they're really, they're really close. So, and you wanna, if you can have them coming off kind of at, at a different angle from one another, great. If they end up really similar to each other, that works too. And then once I've got them on there, then I just start adding their leaves to them and they can come off of both sides. And again, I'm just using brown and black on my brush right now. And these are just big, huge fronds. So you can really go to town. I'm using a ton of paint and you can have little sections coming off of, off of the one main stem if you want to. Just have some fun with it. I think I'm gonna have a little bit coming down in through here. And then once I've got them on there, in their original, sh in the shape that I want. Now I'm gonna start adding green to my brush. I didn't wash it, I just added a little bit of green. And I'm not gonna paint the entire thing. I'm really just using this green as acting like a little bit of a highlight color. And I know as this dries, it will get a little bit darker. So after I get just a little bit of this green on here, I will also add a touch of yellow as well. 
I think I went a little bit too much here, so I just add a little bit of green or black and brown back to my brush. So something like that, and you can see I've got them crossing over. I'm going to go to the other side using just a bit of the green on my brush. And I, I'm doing more just, you know, more the tips as opposed to the whole leaf or the whole frond itself. But again, you just feel whatever you're feeling. If you feel like you want more or less, just go right ahead and do that. These, it's meant to look more as a silhouette than anything, so I wouldn't think that you would see all of the, the leaves in their individual bright self, but if you feel you would, then go for it. Now I'm just gonna take one tiny shade light, lighter, which is I'm gonna take a little bit of yellow and blend it with a little bit of the green. So there I have a little bit lighter of a shade of the green, and then I'm just doing just a couple of pops of this lightest color in through the tips as if whatever's happening in my camper with the lights is kind of illuminating the tips of this tree. And that's all I'm going to do for my palm fronds. We are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you've got this on here, you can wash and dry your medium brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the shadow underneath our camper. So I'm gonna use my medium brush. I will be using brown and black paint, and I'm gonna be using hardly any of either. So just a little bit of brown and a little bit of black. And I really want this to, the rear end of the camper to look like it's off the ground a little bit. So as I'm doing this shadow, I'm going to keep it away from the edge of the camper here, but I'm gonna have it nice and close here. I think I need a little bit more black so we can see it. I'm gonna have it underneath my tire, so something like this. And the shadow's just it meant to be the whatever it's on, darker. So it doesn't always have to just be a black shadow. You can certainly just make a dark brown shadow if you have your land is lighter if your if your sand is on the lighter side maybe you can get away with doing a, a just brown if your sand is darker you may end up having to do more of a black kind of shadow underneath it and you just want to make sure it looks like it is shadowing underneath that that camper that looks good and then i need a little shadow underneath my my um trailer hitch thing so I'm just going to go below it somewhere and put just a little bit of a dark kind of mark your rope might be in the way but if it's not you can certainly just kind of add a little bit of a shadow something like that just to give the illusion that that is casting some kind of shadow on the ground below it. And that is all I'm gonna do for that step. We are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got your shadow under your camper, you can wash and dry your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer to our holiday lights. We're gonna be using white paint, and the reason why I'm gonna do this in a two-step process is I want them to really glow. So I'm gonna be using white paint as my base. I'm really just making a series of white polka dots along the string that we've placed on there. They're gonna be pretty similar in size on these far ones as I'm near the camper or right next to the camper. But on that string that is going towards the tree in the foreground, they're gonna get bigger and bigger. So you'll see how I'm gonna do that in just a second. But you can see I'm doing them pretty similar size, pretty equal distance apart. And now as they start to lift off the camper in through here they're gonna get bigger and bigger and bigger <laughs> i'm gonna just make sure that i keep them nice and circular or as circular as i can keep them this one wants to be a little bigger and once i you can see i'm going a little bit slower on these ones because i want them nice and big and kind of circular um so I might only have, you know, three or four coming up in through here, but I definitely want them to be on the bigger side. And then 
Once we get done doing this step, we are going to use the same brush for the next step. And you don't even really have to wash it. You can just kind of take a break and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are doing the sunset. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna be using white, yellow, and orange. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna be using a very little bit of paint at all times. And because I use a very little bit of paint, that's going to allow me to build layers and it's gonna allow me to add a lot of dimension into this and maybe have some nice low-lying clouds going through the sky and stuff. So I have just a teeny tiny bit of white paint on my brush. I'm gonna have my sunset somewhere in through here. So I'm gonna do just a white line at the horizon that's gonna be about an inch wide, something like that. And then I'm gonna give myself a little bit of a dome, which is gonna be the top of the sun, just sinking right into the ocean or the horizon, whatever you want to interpret it as. And again, I'm using a very little bit of paint and I'm just making sure that I have a nice even coverage on there. And then while it's drying, I'm not gonna wash my brush. I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of yellow paint. So I have white and yellow on my brush and I'm gonna start what I like to refer to as my halo around my, around my sun. And your paint may blend in together. It might look like separate sections. You can totally work it into whatever is visually pleasing to you. You can get those edges to be really soft or really crisp as they're touching the sun. I like mine on the softer side but you can certainly have yours really crisp. And then what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit more yellow just to get this a little bit more vibrant. And then I'm gonna start picking up my orange without washing my brush. So I picked up a little bit of orange and I'm gonna go even further out. So I'm kind of adding these like layers or exterior layers of color and you can get them, you can pull them right out into the sky, make it look like they are illuminating maybe some low-lying clouds, and you can completely make this into whatever you want it to be. You can have these beautiful little clouds just drifting away, being illuminated by this vibrant, melting sun, and you know, imagine it to be whatever way you want. And before I go away and call it done, I wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I do it one more time. <laughs> so this way I really get the effect and the, the glow power of it. So I've got another layer of my white and then I have picking up a tiny bit more yellow, getting that edge to just kind of blend in just a little bit more and then once I've got this the way that I want, what I will end up doing is I'm gonna put little reflections in that water too. So I'm just pulling this yellow out a little bit. It's gonna look so much more glowy, the higher contrast of those vibrant colors that you have next to the sun. If it's really just kind of one note and doesn't have a lot of contrast next to the colors um, that are neighboring it, it might not pop out and be as powerful. So feel free to make this as, you know, energetic as you want or as subtle as you want. It's really kind of, a, oh yeah, I don't like that. Maybe pull some of these out into here. Yeah, that's making me happy. All right, so I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of white paint and just bring a couple little ripples into this water something like this, very little bit of paint on my brush as I do my ripples in my water. You might want yours to be really prominent. I'm just having a teeny tiny bit of a reflection coming just a little bit into the water. Now I'm picking up a touch of yellow to go along the edges. And then I'll pick up a tiny bit of that orange 
to just kind of reflect what's what's going on in the sky, you know, just to give um, the that authenticity to the to the sky to the water reflecting it. And that's all I'm going to do for that. We are going to be using this small brush for the next step. So once you've got your sunset on, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do next is we're putting some glow on our holiday lights. So I'm going to use my small brush. I will be using yellow, orange, green, blue, and white. So how I'm going to do this is first I'm going to use whatever the designated color. So maybe you want all yellow or maybe you want all blue or whatever colors you want. I've got yellow to start. I'm going to put it on the white part and I'm also going to swirl it outside of that white part also. So that's going to give me my glow to it. So I'm going to do this for however many yellow lights that I want. So I'm going to have another one here and then I swirl it outside and these are trans, my, the paints that I'm using are translucent. If you find that you've come to a color that is not see-through, then you might have to pick another color <laughs> but, or add some water to it or something so it's, so it's see-through. Um, and then I'm going to do this to however many yellow lights that I want. And then once I've got all my yellow lights, then I will switch colors to, I'll probably do my orange next. And of course you can see, I'm not going in any systematic order. I'm doing like every two or three lights is gonna be yellow. And then I mean, I'll have a big yellow one down here. Then um, I'm gonna pick up some orange. If you need to wash your brush, feel free to do so. I just wiped mine on my towel. And then I'm just adding some orange to this and swirling it outside of that white area and you can make yours as glowy as you want and then which means you can bring that that exterior glow as far out as you want the farther out you have it the more it's going to look like it's glowing as long as you can see through the glow and see the stuff behind it that's what's going to make it look like it's glowing and not just a solid object so I've got that one and that one, and I'm just gonna kind of keep going until I have all of my orange ones that I want. Now I think I'm gonna do green. So I think I think I might actually do, instead of this solid green, I think I'm gonna do a green yellow. So it's like a lighter green, so it's more vibrant. So I just mixed a little green and yellow. That's what happens when a painter is painting on the fly. They just, they change their thoughts. <laughs> so this one's going to be a green one in through here. Maybe I'll have a green one here, 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 mm, here, and maybe here. And then I have blue. So I'm going to just pick up some blue. I'm going to do a blue one here. Well, that's a little dark. So... I, don't, I can see I don't need a lot of paint, so I'm going to just wipe my brush off on my paper towel. In order to get the glow, I need it to be see-through, so I needed to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. Get myself a little bit more now. Got myself some blue here. And again, you can really have fun with this. If you wanted yours to be a different color, maybe you mix some blue and, green and uh, yellow together. Maybe you mix your orange and blue together and get some kind of purpley-ish kind of color. Have fun with it. And then once I've got them all on there with the color, then I'm going to stick a little white glow dot in the center of it. So I've got my color. Now I just go and I put a bright white dot in the center of them and that really helps to give them that extra little punch of glow and then you just keep tweaking yours until they are as shiny and as glowy as you want them to be and then we are going to be using this same brush for the next step so once you've got all your dots a glowing or all your lights a shining oh i missed that one hmm let's go with some Let's go with some orange on this one. I missed that one before. Um, once you've got all of your lights shining as bright as you want them to shine, we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So you can just wash it and dry it and get ready for the next step.
All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting Santa's chair that he's gonna be lounging in. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm using green, black, and white paint. So how I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna start off with green paint and I'm gonna make the backing of the chair like the, the net or the canvas part of the chair. So I want mine kind of positioned right below my sunset and I don't want it too, too high because I don't want um, it to take away from the, the scenery. So I'm gonna put the top of the chair a little bit lower than the corner of my, my camper. And I'm gonna have my chair about two inches wide. So I'm gonna go somewhere from like here, it's gonna dip down like this and go to about here, something like that. And then I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do two vertical lines that are gonna stop maybe about an inch away from the bottom of my canvas, inch, inch and a half away from the bottom of my canvas. And then I'm gonna give it another kind of curved line for the bottom of the, the back of the chair. Then I'm going to paint that entire section in with green paint. So just something like this. Paint the whole thing with green. And you might be able to see through the green a little bit, but don't be alarmed. We're gonna put another quick dimensional layer on in a second here. So I've got that. Now I'm picking up black without washing my brush. I'm gonna put a bottom to my chair. So you can have this a little bit curved or it can be a little bit flatter if you want. It's gonna go come out a little bit farther than my canvas seat, something like that. I'm gonna put a couple of legs on my chair. So, and these are just improv legs. You can really make them whatever you want. I just need them sturdy enough to make sure that they hold up Santa and all his, all his cookie, cookie eating belly weight that he might have on him because I know that he probably ate lots of cookies during the holiday season as we all do. <laughs> I know I have an extra cookie belly during the during the holidays so I just want to make sure my chair is nice and sturdy enough. So I've got those two legs on the chair. Now I need a little bit of a seat so I'm just going to bring up a kind of, little bit of a diagonal line something like that and then I need another leg of the chair. So I'm going to put a little bit of a leg somewhere in through here. Then without washing my brush, I'm going to wipe it off on my paper towel like this. So I have remnants of black. I'm going to pick up a little bit more green. So I have black and green on my brush right now. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of a shadow down on the back side of this chair to make it look like there's some kind of form to it. And then you can pick up more green as you go up that chair. And again, I'm just using this kind of curved line. And this is, again, going to add some form to, the, to that chair. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And I'm picking up just a tiny bit of white to add a little bit of a highlight on the top left corner of this chair right there and on the front left corner of this leg right here. And that's all I'm gonna do for the chair. I will be um, using the same brush for the next step. So you wanna wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so for the next step, I'm gonna be doing Santa's head and his boots. <laughs> so I'm going to be using my small brush and I'm going to be using black, white, and yellow paint. So I'm going to give him a gray head of hair. So I'm going to put black and white on my brush at the same time. Not much black. And I'm going to have my head kind of big because I think that Santa's got a big head of hair. So I'm going to have it something like, and I, and I think he has curly hair too. So I'm gonna be doing my brush in a curly kind of, or in a circular kind of brush stroke, something like this. And I'm gonna give myself pretty, pretty good size head on here. And you can certainly have fun with the, the size of the head that you want. As I come down towards the, where the 
head meets the chair. I'm going to pick up more black on my brush because I want this to almost look shadowed as it's hitting or it's meeting the chair. So I want the hair to get a little bit darker as it comes down towards the chair and through here. And you can certainly tweak it as much as you need to. And then once I've got that gray hair kind of going into the darkness, what I can do is I'm gonna wa wipe my brush off on my paper towel and pick up a touch of white paint. And I'm gonna add a couple of little curly highlights over on the side where the sun is. So that way it looks like they're being illuminated or highlighted by the sun on the other side. So again, just another dimensional element. Maybe you want yours to look like he's got parted hair or something. You can certainly add those fun details as you see fit. And then I'm just gonna wipe my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna pick up some black paint and I'm doing a couple of little boots off on this that are that he's clearly not wearing right now and for me I'm just gonna kind of make them into a shape that I think Santa's boots might be in this is the back side of them so I think they're a little bit big at the top maybe get a little bit more narrow where the ankle is and then maybe just bump out a little bit where the foot the the heel part is so that's gonna be straight on from the back I'm gonna do the next one will be a little bit tilted to the side a bit. So maybe I've got this one, something like this. Maybe that's gonna be the heel part and maybe we're gonna see a bit of the front of the boot, something like that. And you can have fun with it. Maybe both of yours are looking straight at the, at the horizon. I just wanted to put mine a little bit at a different angle so I could show a little bit of a buckle on it. And I'm gonna do that right now. I'm wiping my brush off on my paper towel. I'm gonna to pick up a little bit of yellow and white paint. I'm gonna put a little tiny buckle in through here. And you know, I'm just using my imagination, just something like that. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of a highlight at the top edge of the the boot, something like that with a little bit of white, something like that. A little highlight on the tippy toe, something like that. And maybe a little bit of a highlight coming down the side, something like that. And then I'm gonna put a teeny tiny bit of a highlight right in through here. And that's all I'm gonna do for the head and the boots so you can wash and dry that small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the hat and the pants for Santa. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I will be using red, black, and white. And how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna do uh, my red first in my series of shapes and then we'll put the fluffy part on and, and the shadow. I have small brush, red paint, from the right corner of the chair, I'm gonna put kind of like a sideways, fun triangle-y type shape, something like this. So this is gonna be where the pom-pom part of his hat is gonna be hanging off of. So something like this, I'm just gonna color it in red paint. And again, you might find that you want two layers or, you know, more thickness in your paint, it's gonna be whatever type of paint you have, you might end up needing a little bit of a second layer. And then I'm gonna put, this part is gonna be the side part of the hat, and it's gonna come in through here. I'm gonna leave a little space because that's where I'm gonna put my, my shadow between the two, something like that. And then I'm gonna use this red paint to put his pants on. So I'm just gonna come about halfway up the chair on the left hand side. I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a knee, something like that. And I'm just gonna ride it right along the chair edge, the seat edge, and then the side of the chair. And I'm just gonna paint it in with some red paint. I'm not doing anything fancy here. Just some red paint. We'll get this on here. And then I'm going to 
wash my brush real quick. Or not wash it, wipe it on my paper towel. Pick up some white paint. And I'm gonna put my little fluff ball on the end. And you could certainly, if you wanted to, add a little bit of dimension, use a little bit of gray as well. But I'm just going for a nice, bright, fluffy, white edge to my hat. Something like this. Even though it's in the shadow, I still feel that I want it to be super white. Not quite sure why. Maybe as I get down towards this bottom part, I might add a little bit of gray onto it. But something like this, and it's going to hide in through that part. Something like that. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to put a little tiny highlight with this white paint on his knee. Something like that. I think I'm going to pick up a touch more red just to get this highlight to blend in a little bit on the knee. I don't need that to be a super big white line. I'm going to pick up, I wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some black paint to add a little bit of a shadow in between here. Something like that. And you can certainly rub it into the red paint if you need to. I'm going to use a little bit more black paint and put a shadow underneath the edge of the hat and through here. Something like this. And if you wanted to, you can certainly make some of that a little bit darker back there, but I think that's good just like that. Ooh, I think I want a tiny bit of a highlight on the top of the hat right in through here just to make sure that everything has the proper highlights and the shadows. And then we are going to be using the same brush for the next step. So once you have your hat and your pants on, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting our shadow underneath our boots and our chair. Small brush. And similar to how you did it on the camper, you can use black and or brown. Very little bit of paint. It's coming from the light source. We've got a good, a good place for it to come this way. So I'm really just kind of putting a little bit behind my boot. I definitely need a little bit more black so you can see it. Behind my boot and just kind of bringing it back a little bit like that. And then same thing on this side. Maybe a little bit more black so we can all see it something like this there we go and then i need a little bit in this chair so maybe something along that line yeah that works all right so we have one tiny little step left to go it's going to be with that small brush so just wash it and get ready All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of any painting, which is to sign it. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right corner. I think I'm gonna sign this in the bottom left. Small brush, black paint. I'm gonna do my initials. You could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like. It's your identifying mark. You can sign it however you'd like to. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a fun, festive painting, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>